welcome to this webinar on integrated urban water management. My name is Mary Trudeau. I am a project officer with the International Water Resources Association, and I'm also a professional engineer and a part-time professor. And uh, to get us started, I would like to welcome uh, Mr. Bongwu Shin, who is the director of the International Center for Water Security and Sustainable Management under the auspices of UNESCO. So IWSSM um, is, uh, he's the director of IWSSM and he also serves as a governing board member of the IHP Korean National Committee. And prior to uh, his current position, Mr. Shin was a public servant with the Ministry of the Environment of the Republic of uh, Korea. And while with the Ministry of the Environment, he served various positions as Director of Environmental Inspection and Investigation Team of the Han River Basin um, Environmental Office, and also Chemical Safety Management Team uh, with the Guam River Basin Environmental Office. Um, so welcome, Mr. Shin, to kick us off. Dear distinguished participant from all over the world, this is Bong Wu Shin, Director of the International Center for Water Security and Sustainable Management under the auspices of UNESCO, which is also known as IWSSM. And I would like to welcome to the Integrated Urban Water Management webinar. Population growth and economic development accelerate urbanization. Today, 55% of the world population lives in urban areas, and it is expected to constantly grow in the future. According to the UN Water, 700 million of people living in cities lack access to improved sanitation, and 156 million live without any improved water sources. Integrated urban water management is a comprehensive approach to manage urban water to build cities more resilient. The Global Water Security Issue series is a co-publication of UNESCO and IWSSM, and it aims to provide knowledge, research findings, and scientific evidence on global water issues to researchers water professionals and policymakers. To highlight the importance of urban, urban water management, the first issue, water security and cities, integrated urban water management mainly focuses on the implementation of the IUWM. Today, two chapters of GWSI issue number four will be discussed in this webinar. I wish this can be an opportunity to share case studies related to urban water management and spread the key messages through it. I sincerely thank you for all your participation. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Shin. So um, as mentioned, we have uh, two authors uh, of chapters who are going to profile the chapters. We also have um, two other presentations to um, profile the importance of integrated urban water management and also highlight the work that IWSSM does for global water security issues. So our first presenter is uh, Sarantuya Zarandaya, who's a program specialist with the Secretariat of the International Hydrological Program uh, at UNESCO. Um, she's developed and launched a number of UNESCO water sciences projects, including the project on emerging pollutants and uh, microplastics, and the World Water Quality Portal for Freshwater Quality Monitoring uh, through the Satellite Earth Observation. And she's coordinated, coordinated um, a number of projects on integrated urban water management. So um, welcome, Sarah, to you. Thank you, Mary. Um, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, dear participants. So I'm very pleased to join this webinar and I uh, would like to uh, share first my screen. Is it okay? Yes, it's good. Yeah. Okay. 
So um, my name is Arampia Zandaria. I'm a program specialist in the Division of Water Sciences, which also serves as the Secretariat of the Intergovernmental Hydrology Program of UNESCO, the headquarters. So the, um, uh, it is my pleasure to uh, co-organize uh, this webinar um, together with the uh, International Center on Water Security. Korea, which is one of the most active uh, UNESCO water related centers, and also our very active important partner, International Water Resources Association, IWRA. So we have a long standing, fruitful collaboration in different um, uh, fields related to water. And the, today's webinar is dedicated to the global launch of one important publication dedicated to uh, integrated urban water management. Um, and this uh, publication is very timely. Uh, and we have already launched this publication in uh, major events like the 10th World Water Forum, but this online publication will also help to disseminate the important, this important knowledge material globally and also to facilitate the sharing of information, best practices, and practical cases of applications of internet urban water management approaches in different urban uh, settings around the world. Um, so um, we all know that the water uh, issues are becoming increasingly complex and challenging around the world. And this is ever more ac accentuated in urban set settings. And uh, I will not um, go into detail about water-related challenges faced by different cities around the world. But we really need to ensure that the urban population, uh, which is more than half of the world's uh, population, uh, lack access to uh, safe drinking water. And then also urban uh, um, aquatic ecosystems, rivers are one of the most polluted in the world. And on top of these climate changes, exacerbating water-related challenges in the cities and many cities around the world, whether it is in developed regions or developing regions, they are uh, uh, facing problems related to water scarcity, and we have to really cope with the water scarcity and the lack of water, fresh water resources, um, uh, which is uh, being uh, aggravated by climate change impacts. And on top of this, uh, of course, we also have to make sure that water is also available for other uses, such as agriculture and environmental flow. So there are competing needs. So, how to um, look at uh, these uh, issues in a global uh, holistic manner. Uh, that's where the importance of the integrated urban water management approach. And so uh, through uh, the management of water uh, issues in, uh, in a holistic way, we can support sustainable urban development and contribute to um, uh, global agendas on water and uh, uh, cities such as the SDG 6 on water, 11 on sustainable cities, the new urban agenda, as well as the Sendai framework on disaster risk reduction, and not uh, last but not least, the uh, Paris Agreement on climate change. So UNESCO is supporting uh, cities around the world in managing water resources in a sustainable way for human well-being and environmental sustainability in order to support the achievement of global urban and water agendas. Uh, so one of the uh, activities we show a circular economy in urban water management and how to support cities to transition to circular urban water management and how to make cities more resilient to climate change impacts and what are, what is the role of natural based solutions in urban water management how to reduce water pollution in urban areas and uh, uh, thinking also this in a broader picture of source to sea management and of freshwater, coastal, and marine ecosystems, and what is the best uh, models for urban water governance, and how to promote science for science based policy development for uh, adaptive integrated urban water management to make cities more resilient to climate change impacts. So these issues are all embedded in the strategic plan of the ninth phase of IHP. And you see on the screen the different uh, outputs and priority areas focused on urban water management. So this publication, Water Security and Cities, the Integrated Urban Water Management, is one of the contributions to the implementation of the uh, strategic plan of the ninth phase of uh, 
the Intergovernmental Hydrological Program of UNESCO. So this is really important a contribution in terms of uh, facilitating the knowledge sharing and then also promoting cooperation among cities in different parts of the world uh, to um, sustainably manage water resources and to showcase practical applications of the uh, integrated urban water management uh, approach in uh, different um, uh, uh, settings, for example, water sensitive urban design, uh, local stakeholder engagement in urban water management, natural based solutions to urban drainage, or what is the role of urban ground man uh, groundwater management in the broader water uh, management, uh, etc. So uh, we are very pleased to launch this publication globally, and then I hope you will really uh, yeah, use the, uh, this important information material as a, uh, a tool to inspire local action in your cities and uh, also to uh, um, uh, have more uh, broader uh, collaboration with other cities which are implementing these approaches. So I also would like to briefly mention that IHP has been promoting the approach of integrated urban water management since the seventh phase uh, of uh, IHP uh, 2008. And we have published a series called UNESCO Urban Water Series, uh, Integrated Urban Water Management. On this screen, also, you see the eight books published in this series. And these are also available through uh, UNESCO website. So, with this, I would like to hand it over back to Mary. Thank you very much. And, of course, uh, you will now hear of the uh, cases included in the publication. Thank you. Okay, great. Thank you, Sarantia. Um, <clears throat> so I'd like to encourage everyone to submit your questions. We will have a question and answer uh, period. We'll have lots of time after all of the presentations for um, your questions and, and also so for some panel discussion. Um, so our next presenter is Mr. Sayo Hayang Choi. Mr. Choi is a Senior Program Specialist for Research and Development Division at the International Center for Water Security and Sustainable Management, IWSSM, um, under the auspices of, of UNESCO. Uh, prior to joining IWSSM, he was a researcher <clears throat> in the Korea Environmental Institute. Mr. Choi has uh, a variety of experience in, in nexus issues with water, climate change, water resources management, and, uh, and natural hazards as uh, both a researcher and a project officer. So welcome, Seo. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Mary. And I would like to share my screen. And great. Um, once again, uh, thank you very much for the brief introduction. And um, uh, good morning, afternoon, and evening for the all the participants from all over the world. And, as introduced, uh, I am a senior program specialist at IWSSM, which is a, a category two center under the species of UNESCO. So today, uh, my presentation uh, will be uh, highlighted and to give you the brief idea of what's the publication of global water security issues and to introduce you briefly. And before we go into the details, I'd like to introduce our center first. So IWSSM, uh, it stands for International Center for Water Security and Sustainable Management. And we are the category two center under the species of UNESCO located uh, in uh, Republic of Korea. And the main objective of our center is to support water security strategies for sustainable development and support uh, SDGs, especially for the six goals of clean water and sanitation. And our, our center mainly focuses on three pillars of um, which including research and development, education and capacity building program and international networks for, for water cooperation. For research and development, it includes a uh, publication of uh, global water security issues and, and uh, nexus water energy nexus research and education and capacity building program. We can uh, we support uh, we provide tailored educational programs for developing countries related to water security issues. And today, I'd like to focus on the uh, global water security issues. So um, the global water security issues, we called it as a, a GWSI series. 
and it's a co-publication of UNESCO and IWSSM. And IWRA has been involved in this project uh, from the second issue, and it's an open access uh, listed in the UNESCO Digital Library. And the main objective of this publication is to disseminate the current important issues related to the water security to share knowledge and experience from diverse perspectives. And for publication as a process, uh, still we call it as a steering committee, UNESCO, uh, IWSSM, and IWRA, uh, we set the theme and we call for proposals. And the potential paper selections according to the UNESCO's uh, gender equality and African priority strategies. And we through the peer reviewing and revision processes, and then we finalize the publication and publish it. <laughs> So this is the general uh, process of the global water security issues. So, so far uh, we have been published uh, four uh, issues, including water security and the sustainable development goals and water reuse within a circular economy context. And the third issue was uh, entitled with the role of sound groundwater resource management and governance to achieve water security. And the latest uh, publication was entitled to Water Security in Cities, Integrated Urban Water Management, which is uh, today's webinars uh, mainly focus on. So the fourth uh, issue of global water security issues uh, is, a, uh, in, is introduced in Integrated Urban Water Management and it includes uh, various chapters, including IUWM and city planning and stakeholder engagement, innovation to meet urban water demand and frameworks for uh, integrated urban water management solutions. And today's uh, several authors will uh, give general, uh, their insights and valuable experience that they publish in these uh, publications. And for this uh, publication, uh, 47 authors has been involved and, um, uh, and out of 47 authors, uh, there are 48% of female authors and with 17% 17 of African. And the next issues will be uh, published uh, related to climate change adaptation and biodiversity protection. And, uh, hope, and we are aiming to open the call for proposal for the issue number seven um, uh, by this year that we are planning. And so uh, please, uh, stay focused and if you have any further uh info if you need any further information please visit uh, unesco iwssm and iwra website and also if you have any questions please let me know and i'll be happy to respond and thank you very much great thank you sue um <clears throat> and so so Boseo and Sarantuya have uh, included the link uh the UNESCO library has all of the uh, global water security issues publications and and lots of other resources as well so uh, we encourage you to um to follow up after this webinar and access the um <clears throat> the the resources in that library so now um we're going to move on to profiling two of the chapters uh, within issue four of the global water security issues. And our first speaker is Dr. Hassan Abol Enga. He's a lecturer at TH Koln uh, University of Applied Sciences and an influential leader in water security and climate uh, resilience. As vice chair of the Middle East Water Forum and chair of urban water security with the International Water Resources Association, He's driven some major initiatives to advance knowledge and actions for organizations like the World Bank and UNESCO. His contributions have shaped policies on urban water management, digital transformation, uh, water uh, energy food nexus, uh, climate adaptation, and making uh, an impact on sustainable development in the Arab region and worldwide. So uh, welcome, Hassan. Yeah, thanks so much, Shamari. Hello, everyone. Uh, happy to be with you. And uh, actually, I wanted to thank uh, IWRA and uh, UNESCO and IWSSM for the, their great role <clears throat> on advancing knowledge and actions toward achieving uh, water security in cities. 
actually uh, my presentation uh, or the work that or the webinar that we are doing and the publication coming at really a critical moment uh, for uh, for us as we are in the mid of achieving sustainable development goals and we are off track uh, to almost all water related sustainable development goals uh, according to the UN water reports so what I will try in this presentation is to give you an overview about uh, chronic challenges that we have in, in, in cities and are, what are the holistic solutions or the new paradigms that we need to achieve water security in uh, cities. Actually, you know, the water challenges now uh, uh, are becoming uh, really at the forefront of uh, many priorities for many countries uh, since water scarcity issues coupled with uh, climate change uh, extremes such as floods and droughts all of this put a great pressure on our socioeconomic uh, development and for sure there are many concepts around the uh, water like the water security concepts but also there is also a need to emphasize on the urban area or the role of cities in order to achieve water uh, security so as we talk about the urbanization and also the increasing water demand due to population growth and flux also of displaced people to many cities uh, coupled with uh, climate extremes uh, all of this put a great pressure on the way we manage water today the way we finance water today the way we collaborate with each others and the way also we uh, draft our policies and you see now when we are talking about cities uh, uh, that 50 percent or more than 50 percent of people are, uh, really reside in cities and this could uh, be expected to be higher uh, for sure, when it comes to the challenges of management, is not only about the, the management perspective or the resource perspective, but also from financial perspective. That according, if you can see in this uh, figure, that we really need four to six times of the capital investment of today to reach the SDG 6 by 2030. And uh, according to the, uh, the last uh, Wallet Bank report, also that it said that uh, uh, although the large uh, spending uh, gaps that we have, the water uh, sector is not able to spend all the allocated budget and the annual uh, bu annual budget execution gap is about 72%. Uh, so imagine the gap in order to achieve water security. So in terms of water management, the perspective, as you can see in this picture, the challenges difference from level to level, from the first level to utility level, from the challenges to water supply and also sanitation, to the second level on water connected also to cities, and the third level about cities connected to basins with major challenges for sure on transboundary water issues. And you would find also the acute challenges of water in many cities from this picture regarding discharging of wastewater, high levels of non-revenue water, uh, people also uh, uh, having uh, or receiving water in less than 24 seven hours, which is mainly the intermittent water supply, coupled for sure with climate extremes and pollution in, uh, in cities. For sure, intermittent water supply uh, now is, uh, is widespread in many cities, uh, especially in water scarce uh, cities. And the scale of it is now is very huge. It's uh, now 1.2 billion people do have access to the water network, but don't receive water all the time. And they have to uh, store water for, uh, uh, for a long uh, for, for a time in order to, uh, to get water and to use water. And the challenges for intermittent water supply is really widespread that you can see also the causes of it is not only about the water scarcity problem, but also water governance and also operational and the management uh, coupled for sure with institutional and socioeconomic aspects. So you'd find also all these challenges contributing that many cities would really shift from continuous supply to intermittent supply, which will be also leading to uh, significant uh, mismanagement to the water uh, resources and also widening the gap between uh, uh, supply and demand. Another major challenge also that we find also in the cities is mainly the high levels of non-revenue water, 
which is now the scale is really very big that we have 126 billion cubic meter per year is being lost whether due to physical losses or commercial losses physical losses in terms of leakage in the network uh, also uh, outdated infrastructure coupled for sure with uh, commercial losses that comes from uh, billing inefficiencies and also uh, metering also inefficiencies and also uh, water theft or illegal uses of water so from all of these challenges we see that water security is not only about availability issue and it's not about the resource so the un water has provided this framework for uh, for water security which provides for us a holistic perspective on how we can really address water security and how we could provide the solutions based in these four main dimensions of drinking water and human well-being ecosystem socioeconomic aspects and also water related hazard and climate change and from that we see urban water security getting into the the concept of UN water you see also there is a need to operationalize water security in Syria and that is why this framework that I uh, provide and has been applied in many cities around the world and in in our publication in the global water security uh, uh, series I focus on Beirut as a, one of the major also water scarce uh, cities but you see here each dimension it has also uh, indicators and also components that we need also to and the pillars that we really need to focus at in terms not only about water quantity uh, and the water quality but also looking also at the socio-economic aspects and the budget directed to the water sector from aspects also of water governance to climate change and water related hazards uh, from also uh, climate extremes such as floods and droughts but also ecosystem in which is really plays a great role in our uh, in our environment and this is very important to consider urban water security as a definition as a dynamic capacity of water system and the stakeholders to access safely manage to to safely manage the water and sanitation and for sure this water that has to be provided to uh, people should be continuous and physically and legally available at an affordable cost so this is very important in order to ensure water security in uh, cities if we inter uh, have translate all this assessment framework into indicators and the measure water security in numbers uh, there is a scale from one to five in which we five is really uh, uh, good or excellent water security and we have poor water security if it really goes to down here you see this example from uh, Beirut and Lebanon this uh, uh, diagram it really provides you with a holistic and overview about water security in terms of measure so if you are near to the center so it means that you have bore, bore water security if you are uh, reaching to five uh, which is mainly to high water security you would find also to see all the trade-offs and all the gaps that you can see in the cities and how really each intervention could play a great role in order to achieve water security so this is very important uh, diagram for decision makers and the water stakeholders also to guide them to achieve water security in cities so this is very important for us to see and how really we can achieve water security and you you see here for uh, Beirut it has also fair urban water security which it has a major challenge when it comes to access to uh, safely manage the water and sanitation but also from socio-economic perspective and also uh, uh, climate change and the water related uh, hazards so this means that we need new paradigm uh, what I mean by new paradigm is really it's changing the way we manage water today from linear system of use and dispose to circular economy model to shift from infrastructure delivery to more resilient services to change the way we finance water and also uh, the need uh, also to engage uh, commercial finance new sources also of finance uh, because it is not enough uh, for us it's changing also the way we collaborate that is why IWRM is really the great way to uh, achieve water security in cities this is the five eyes that we can leapfrog in order to achieve water security in terms of integration and achieving uh, the integrated water resources management innovation through new technologies and digital transformation 
and the financing and new partnerships. Infrastructure also that needs also to shift from infrastructure delivery to resilient uh, services also that we need. Information and also the role of digital transformation to achieve water security in cities. And last but not least, an institution which is role to reform itself in order to be credit worthy and also to achieve the SDG tax by 2030. That is why also I now I'm organizing an online course on eye water, which is focusing that we need the eye in order to achieve water security. This means integrated urban water security, IWRM approach, managing also immigration and impacts and risks, uh, aligning also with international water agenda and having intel intelligent water systems or smart water system and strengthening our institutions in order to achieve water sec secure and resilient cities in the future. Thanks so much for your attention and I will be happy also to receive your questions uh, after uh, the in the QA part. Thanks so much. Thank you very much, Hassan. So integrated urban water management as one of the essential eyes. It's uh, good to to hear it. So our our uh, our next and and final presenter is Noor Van Doren. Uh, Noor is a researcher on public design and resilience management and governance team at KWR Water Research Institute. Her research focuses on the social and governance aspects of water management helping actors understand how to better uh, manage plan changes and how to shape their own role in these changes. For example, using the city blueprint approach, which is profiled in one of the chapters. Um, so welcome, Noor. Uh, yeah, thank you, Mary. Um, my name is Noor van Doren. I work at KWR Water Research Institute, and we are the research institute for the Dutch water utilities. But today I will be presenting on the chapter from the report uh, focusing on water security in sub-Saharan African cities, uh, specifically in Abuja in Nigeria, Bangui in the Central African Republic, Harare in Zimbabwe, Libreville in Gabon, Windhoek in Namibia, and Gaoundé in Cameroon. And this research was conducted by my colleagues at KWR in collaboration with the Water and Innovation and Research Center in, at the University of Bath the International Water Association and with UNESCO in light of the intergovernmental hydrological program. And this research was conducted mainly because we can see that the global population is expected to increase by 2 billion people from 7.8 billion in 2020 to a total of 9.8 billion people by 2050. And it is ex expected that almost half of this uh, global growth will take place in sub-Saharan Africa, uh, specifically in cities. So it is expected that cities in uh, sub-Saharan Africa will reach an urban population of around 1 billion people by 2050. And we can see that as cities grow, um, water demand will grow proportionally and sometimes even faster than the number of people. And this can increase the water abstraction from primary water sources. In some, and in some cases, cities already have to import their water from other water basins. And this is pushed by uh, a migration from rural to urban areas. And this is often paired with without any proportional economic growth in the urban areas, uh, mainly because of push conditions for migration such as deteriorating agricultural conditions, which are worsened by, for example, climate change, natural disasters, or violent conflict. Um, a slow development of the urban infrastructure, which is lagging behind at the ur urbanization rate, and because of high urban densities. And these points really highlight the importance of investing in urban infrastructure in the context of these rapid urban expansions and demographic transformation uh, to ease pressure of population growth. Additionally, we can see that the water scarcity in sub-Saharan Africa is already going beyond the availability of resources. So it really is broader, broader than only the physical mismatch between supply and demand. Um, there are also many human-induced scarcity factors that are equally important to this. 
And in this, we identified a need to act and develop plans for integrated water resources management and governance to enable long-term water security in Sub-Saharan Africa. And in this project, we applied the city blueprint approach. Uh, this is an approach that we use more often. It, so far, it has been used in 135 cities worldwide for the city blueprint part, and then 30 cit cities have also been assessed in the governance capacity analysis. And the city blueprint approach really focuses on uh, three different types of frameworks. So the first framework is a trends and pressures framework. And this aims to answer the question, what are the city's main challenges that are outside of the scope of their own influence? So think of um, factors such as water scarcity in general, because you're in an area that doesn't receive and doesn't have any resources. Then secondly, uh, the city blueprint performance framework is how adequate is the city's water management at this time. Um, think of how many people are receiving access to clean water or to wastewater treatment. And then the third framework is the governance capacity analysis, which aims to answer the question of where can the city's water governance be improved. And in this project, we applied this approach in five cities, uh, six cities. And we the aim really was to assess the IWRM in sub-Saharan African capitals and provide a baseline diagnosis of the state of the water resources management and also the water governance. And we did this by using the city blueprint approach to initiate the first step in strategic planning and water management and governance. And a main focus of this project was actually also to train young professionals to use this approach and help them connect with stakeholders in their own cities. And through this, they were able to develop a database on African cities to identify water management priorities and create learning opportunities. And we also helped the young professionals to create political awareness about the issues in their cities and empower them through network building and education. So the different steps we took in this uh, project is that we started with um, a small preparation by the young water professionals. So they had to familiarize themselves with the city blueprint approach and start the initial assessment by uh, scoring the different pressures and um, city blueprint performance already based on public available data. Uh, this was followed by a kickoff webinar that was um, carried out in both English and French, which further explained the methodology and helped the young professionals to get more acquainted with it. And then thirdly, um, they could start on their field work, which involved setting up a stakeholder analysis, um, ensuring data collection, and also having regular feedback sessions with my colleagues uh, from KWR and Bath University on whether or not they were on track and if they could change some things or look at whether their data was already uh, up to date. And then uh, the quality assurance was carried out by my colleague from KWR. And then at the African Water Association conference in Kampala, the young water professionals actually presented their findings and key recommendations to each other. And the conference also helped for them in a sense of network development. And they were able to already translate the results to messages for stakeholders and decision makers. And finally, uh, there were city workshops that were organized in which uh, the messages for stakeholders and decision makers were actually given to them. So let's get into the results of this uh, research. What we can see when we look at the trends and pressures is that the red scores are uh, signifying the higher pressures. And we can see that all cities experience strong pressures and that these pressures are also quite similar among the different cities. And we can see especially, especially high scores for uh, the burden of disease, education rate and economic pressure. And for all cities except for Windhoek, we can also see some strong governance issues. And then for the city blueprint performance, I know the picture is small, but it's more to 
indicate the current state, um, we always say the bluer the better. So the more blue you see in the graph, the better the current uh, performance of water management is. And we can see that for Abuja and Bangui and Libreville, they have only limited access to drinking water. Harare and Yahunde have moderate access, whilst Windhoek has relatively good access. And then we can see that secondary and tertiary wastewater treatment systems are often not present in these cities, uh, where an exception for wastewater treatment is observed in Windhoek and to some extent in Harare. And finally, solid waste is also an important issue in most cities and recycling and energy recovery from solid waste are often absent. So the governance capacity was analyzed for three cities, namely Libreville, Windhoek and Yaoundé. Uh, but unfortunately, the uh, data collection was limited by COVID-19. We were still able to find some uh, or get some good findings, but it was a bit limited because some of the interviews had to be organized remotely or online. So to start off with Libreville, we can see that there are three major challenges experienced when it comes to governance capacity. And those are uh, water pollution, flooding and water scarcity. And these really impact uh, the social and economic development of the city. There is also quite limited information and monitoring available for these challenges. And we can see that policies addressing these challenges have quite a limited effect, mostly because there's also a limitation in financial resources and human capacity. And then the recommendation by the young water professional was to invest in strengthening professional expertise. For Windhoek, we found some uh, strengths that could really help the governance capacity, and it was their resourcefulness, uh, the fact that they have a continued water supply and collaborative approaches. But we also identified some challenges, uh, which were the implementation capacity for legislation, a lack of financial continuation, uh, a lack of technical expertise, and a lack of accountability. And this was mostly due to the fact that the legislations in Windhoek are quite Eurocentric and these do not always fit the Namibian context. And then finally, in Yaoundé, um, the governance of water scarcity in urban heat islands are found to be quite well developed. But for flood risk, wastewater treatment and solid waste, this is less the case. And we the recommendation uh, of the young water professional was that the projects need better monitoring and evaluation and efforts for cross-stakeholder learning can really help in this. And this will lead to strengthening of accountability and compliance. So to summarize, we found that there are uh, severe urban water management challenges in sub-Saharan African capitals, um, mostly around access to water supply, limited wastewater treatment and solid waste handling, as well as climate adaptation. And especially these latter two, they really uh, also play into the trends and pressures that we saw surrounding flood risk and burden of disease. Um, then we can also see that the economic pressure and low political stability, stability are discouraging for the governance capacity as well as a lack of data and monitoring, which are hindering development of these cities regarding governance capacity. What we did find is that the bottom-up approach that really foc focused on empowering young uh, professionals is seen to be encouraging. And actually in 2021, uh, four more cities were assessed, uh, Abidjan, Nairobi, Lagos and Lusaka, but these weren't included in the chapter yet. And we also found that the city blueprint approach is really suited for capacity development of young water professionals and uh, addressing issue, issues of information disclosure. And it, it can help local young water professionals to support in decision making, empowering them and being transparent about their data collection. All right, thank you. Thank you very much, Noor. Um, so I'd like to invite uh, uh, the International Water Resources Association Interim Executive Director, Ignacio Derigus, 
who has been monitoring uh, your questions. And um, do we have any questions, Ignacio? Um, so there is a comment from Farah Kamaledin uh, saying, thanks for the insightful presentation. This is a question to Dr. Hassan. How did you assess adequacy and equity mentioned um, among the indicators? What are your takeaways uh, of this case study? And lastly, may you share the link of the relevant publication for this study, if any? Yeah, thanks so much, uh, Ignacio, and thanks so much for this important question. Uh, for adequacy and equity, I measure it from the point of intermittent water supply, because intermittent water supply you will find also some uh, problems with equity and also uh, because most of the people are near to the to uh, to the to the source or to the reservoirs they take most of the water and people at the end of the network they don't receive all the water because in intermittent water supply it's only for a short time which is mainly uh, receiving water for, uh, like uh, I could say about in the Middle East uh, countries, uh, they receive water only once or twice per week. And for a short period, they have to store water. And this uh, you would find in this many cities and also in Asia that they find also uh, the people at the end of the network, they don't receive uh, water. Uh, and this is very problem, uh, very acute problem in intermittent water suppl supply. And my takeaway on this, I think there are many, uh, there are two schools on this, uh, whether they say we improve intermittent water supply or the other school, which I belong, uh, also I'm a specialist group for intermittent water supply at IWIA, in which we have the school to shift from intermittent water supply to continuous supply. Because it's very easy to shift a network from continuous to intermittent, but to get it back from intermittent to continuous, it takes me uh, months or even years in order to get the uh, the network back. So this I uh, this is the main message that I could deliver it uh, from to to look at these challenges and also to shift uh, business as usual that we are doing in many cities around the world, especially the scale is already uh, big. Thank you. Thank you, Hassan. I think she she meant uh, she was relating to the Beirut uh, case study. Uh, so I think, but I think. Yeah, it is the same also uh, thing also there. Exactly. That with intermittent water supply, it's also relevant also in Beirut that uh, they receive only water once or twice per week. And yeah. I measure it also from the time of uh, supply because may, time is also short for many uh, people. Uh, at the end of the network and this is also an indicator to measure the adequacy so i try to be to have a quantitative indicators and this quantitative indicator are already there and for sure you would find all similar with the blue city uh, uh, framework okay perfect thank you um uh, so to has uh, your hand up so to you yeah would you like to answer any questions or to you um, thank you, Mary and Ignacio. Uh, there's a very important question from uh, Kaushal Shapago. Yeah, uh, it says in urban water management, we see. Yeah, I was about access. to. Yeah, yeah, thanks. Yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah but uh, I just would like to reflect to this question. So, and I would like to read it. We see multiple assessment frameworks with varying scoring systems developed for similar goals. What uh, factors drive the creation of these different frameworks, how do you evaluate their credibility and validity? So that's the most important question, because exactly this was demonstrated in the two presentations, the water security scoring presented by Hassan and the City Blue Blockchain framework presented by Noor. So they have a similar approach, but different uh, methodologies, uh, different scoring system. And uh, exactly, uh, UNESCO being the global organization, we uh, would like to make sure that uh, um, the data used and the methodologies approaches used are credible and valid. So uh, I really would like to invite both Hassan and Noor to respond to this question. But my question is, 
for example, within the US system, we have joint monitoring um, programs, especially for access to uh, clean water and access to sanitation. So these are the official data submitted by the governments. Of course, of course this is the international level, not at the city level, um, but in the framework of the SDG monitoring. So that is really got as official information in the credible and valid. But now at the city level, I see, for example, Abuja scored 10 in terms of access to sanitation. So I believe that the data are accurate, and which means that 100% uh, of the population in Abuja has access to sanitation. The similar was almost 10 in uh, Yaoundé access to sanitation, while in those cities access to clean water was scoring very small. That is, I'm, I'm referring to the presentation of the blueprint uh, by me. So, um, so this, uh, I really would like to highlight the importance of the um, um, uh, credibility of the uh, scientific approach and the data collection uh, when we present such methodologies and especially when we apply it in case studies with a specific scoring so that the scoring uh, and information presented are credible and valid. So I think this is really important. I uh, would like to invite both um, uh, presenters to react from the methodology and data credibility and valid validation. Uh, and to, thank you. So maybe we can start with Noor, if you want to make any comments. Um, yeah, so if I understood correctly, the specific question was how to ensure that these frameworks are uh, correct, but also more in line for comparison with each other. Is that correct, Sarah and Tia? Yeah, the question is, you can read in the uh, uh, question, so from Charles, so what are the, how do you evaluate their credibility and validity? So for example, in the case of Abuja, uh, I, I believe in the, uh, in the assessment, so how come that the city has so low level of access to clean water, but 100% access to sanitation? So I suppose the city, what is the background behind it? Is the city has given more priority on access, more policies on access to sanitation than access to clean water? Usually, you know, access to safe water is always higher than access to sanitation. Yeah, um, I think the difference in this case uh, can be attributed to the fact that access to drinking water is often a central um, service, whereas access to sanitation can also be, for example, uh, a septic tank or something like that. So it doesn't necessarily have to be centralized. So that's where the difference may come from. Um, and we also, uh, for this city blueprint uh, performance, we rely on the most recent data. So we check what we have available and we um, validate that, but sometimes there's just not more up-to-date data. Uh, so that's why with all of these uh, graphs, we have background documents where you can find all sources that were used. Um, so I think that um, answers the question in, for example, the difference between access to drinking water and access to sanitation. As for the question asked in the Q&A, um, I think, how can we evaluate their credibility and validity? I think transparency about the use of the data is a big aspect in this. Um, but I think science in itself has a way of always creating more frameworks rather than less. Uh, so I think definitely more collaboration would, would help to ensure more consistency in this. Thank you, Noor. And Hassan, do you have a comment? Yeah, thanks so much. I, I really uh, like the question of uh, Saranto. It's really very important and very challenging also, uh, one, because, you know, imagine uh, you would find, if you look in the literature review, you would find many definitions for uh, uh, water security and for sure urban water security and many also frameworks that you will find also in the research arena. And this is very challenging also, not only from the policy and governance point of view, but also the data point of view. That is why in in in, in my from framework, when I really worked in it, I tried, you know, uh, to base 
the the framework on a solid already and agreed framework that is why i built the urban water security about the framework of un water which is really uh, globally uh, for sure recognized as uh, the way that we should really achieve water security from this four main pillars and the challenge and how to operationalize each dimension and this is a very point and this is i think this was also a major challenge also with mawak or with mega cities with mega cities you have different stakeholders with different needs and different priorities different challenges so how you could really bring a framework that cover all these challenges and also cover all these water stakeholders because there are many also uh, different roles and responsibilities within even uh, the city. That is why this framework, when it was operationalized, it was make sure that this framework is based on uh, the UN Agenda for Sustainable Development with the SDG 6, which also the related or connected indicators, and the second to the human rights to water and sanitation, to emphasize that we have equitable and also affordable uh, water services. And this is very important to also to emphasize for uh, this frameworks in order, you know, to be uh, also uh, uh, credible and also to be applicable in uh, for decision makers. Because decision makers, they need to see the full picture as I, I make it in the, this full diagram to see what are the trade-offs that they could see from all these dimensions and also what are in terms of the data which indicators that should be used. And this is why I emphasize for each indicator that should be having a reference to already the national agenda or to uh, international agenda like uh, the, SDG, uh, the SDGs. Uh, and this is very important to be aligned, you know, with the agendas. And in terms of the fr different frameworks, uh, this is also maybe a good uh, moment that I also I call that all this framework is also to collaborate with each other. So in my in my I in my, in my regard, I also collaborate with many frameworks, including for sure the city uh, blueprint, to encourage them to have a one framework or a guide framework with really a main objective for us to achieve water security in cities. I already done this with also cases in Asia with. Uh, well, with also uh, many colleagues there with also another framework and they would find many similarities but also different challenges on how to find which indicators and also how we can really make uh, make it really uh, uh, applicable in cities because at the end uh, we need at the end uh, uh, I recognize the framework in order to operationalize uh, water security and already this applied in many cities in Asia with also with colleagues and also happy also to expand this uh, with also other frameworks to uh, to work on it. And but okay. this is really very important to question in order to really address and also to guide also uh, member states and also uh, 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 for sure uh, UNESCO on how we can really operationalize this concept into uh, the reality. Okay, well, we're we're at the top of the hour, so um, we do have to bring this particular discussion to a close, but I really would like to encourage um, everyone in the, the audience to um, consider joining IWRA. You can find us at IWRA.org. Uh, bronze members, there's no fee. Silver um, and gold members can join Hassan, for example, on the uh, water security um, task force to discuss uh, these issues. How do you inform policymakers on um, issues that are as complex as water security um, with uh, the most reliable data possible? It's not a simple um, issue. It's not a simple answer. And um, I'm really pleased that we've had the opportunity to discuss uh, this topic today with um, our panelists and uh, specialists in, in urban integrated urban water security. So. Thank you, everyone, for your time. Thank you. Okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you very much.